Hi and welcome to uh, thepapara.com. We have a very special guest with us today and we're very happy to have him here at the Odell Sports uh, Enclosure. And it's none other than a former All Black captain. He captained the All Blacks for a few games. Uh, former All Black, great All Black as well, a seven year career there. And now he's a consultant coach for Trinity College, hoping to win them their first Bradby in uh, five years as well. Mr. Rodney Soyalo uh, joins us for the, his first trip here in Sri Lanka. Rodney, great to have you on the show, mate. Yeah, it's great to be here, thank you. And how are you enjoying Sri Lanka so far, your first visit? Yeah, I really enjoy Sri Lanka actually. It is the first uh, visit for myself. Um, I really like the people here and uh, and what the country offers, which is um, yeah, a beautiful place. And Candy, it must be nice as well, nice and peaceful, a bit different from Wellington. Yeah, it is a bit peaceful, um, yeah, but it's actually a little bit more peaceful than, than Colombo as well. Okay. You know, uh, the weather is slightly cooler, uh, which I like, and the atmosphere is pretty good. The weather must be a big shock for you uh, from Wellington, where it's every season, every day. Uh, Rodney, yeah. you like it here? Yeah, I really enjoy the weather actually. Um, it's, it's not too bad when, when you can go out and it's close to 30 degrees every day. You know, The only thing you sort of have to watch out for is, is how much um, sun you're exposed to, but I really enjoy the weather. So you've been with Trinity at Palakale, wonderful ground to train mm. in as well. How is this Trinity team looking? What were you expecting when you found them and how have you, what have you worked on? Uh, I've actually been working with uh, Trinity College for, uh, for two months prior to that. Um, prior to me coming here. Um, they come to New Zealand for, for eight weeks and, and I coached them over there, you know. So the boys uh, uh, turned up in, in, in great spirits, but yeah, um, they were lacking in, in, in knowledge and a bit of technical skills. Apart from that, um, we, we, we worked with them for, two, for, for the two months and they were brilliant. Right? You know, the attitudes had changed and they developed into, you know, great young men, which is what you want to, um, what you want as a, as a coach. And um, uh, that's something that is difficult to work on, isn't it, uh, Rodney, in developing character as well as the skills? It can be. It, it can be really, really difficult, you know, especially um, because you're, you're with them in a short period. So the, the amount of change that we had in that short period was, was outstanding. So, um, and, I, and I've had the privilege of, of working with uh, Trinity College again for the uh, past three weeks and, and we've just grown even more so um, the boys are looking very good, um, high spirits and and um, well, which is positive about where, where we're at at the moment. And did you find them very responsive Rodney? You said they started off with maybe not the highest skill level but when you gave in the input how did they respond to it? Um, they responded really really well you know they were you know, they, they were a b bunch of young men that were we're hungry for knowledge, um, and and it's a great thing as a coach to to be able to see that. Um, but in saying that, we, um, what I really took from from the Trinity boys was um, was the fact that they 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 just wanted to grow. You know, they wanted to grow their rugby. They wanted to grow as people, and and I really enjoyed that about uh, working with the with the young men that we're working with. And what were the biggest issues that you found when you met them for the first time? What did you think, okay, this is what I need to work on first? Um, complacency mm -hmm. was, uh, was something that I witnessed. Um, and the other, the other thing was, was obviously um, the culture that they've been exposed to before. And that was in regards to uh, um, what's accepted, what's not accepted. Um, you know the what's accepted uh, prior to that was maybe a few drop balls. It's fine. It's everything will be fine. Bad pass, but um, reality is, if, in order to grow, you have to you have to acknowledge that those those things are not accepted. Mm -hmm. um, so we we acknowledged those really really early, um, and that was probably that was actually my first um, words that came out of my mouth towards them uh, to, towards the Trinity boys. And, and the response that they had uh, that came back from from that first interaction with them was really, really positive. You know, the boys um, picked up their act, they were a lot sharper in what they were doing, and they were, um, and they were engaged. So, I, I, yeah, it was really, really good. You were talking about leadership, uh, Rodney, with the Trinity College boys and how uh, they've grown and they're happy to grow other players as well. Tell us a bit more about that experience. Yeah, these... Um our, our leaders for the Trinity boys have really grown. Like I said before, um, 
Well, I think from from what I gathered before was they were sort of um, individual, you know, um, individuals that had a lot of influence, but yet didn't didn't acknowledge their responsibilities as leaders, mm. or didn't actually see themselves as leaders. Um, that's um, that's that's one area of growth that that Trinity has really come come along, and we, we see that with our trainings, we see that with our meetings, and um, and just the way that they responded. You know, just in regards to their new, new role mm-hmm. as leaders, um, whether they wanted to be a leader, you know, some of us don't actually want to. Mm-hmm. It's just something that you've been, you know, given as as because you are. You know, you are what you are, and and you just have to take that on board. And and the boys have re- responded really, really well. Uh, Rodney, you've played with some really great captains. Stan mm. Maga uh, with the All Blacks and of course Richie McCall may have been the greatest ever uh, All Black captain as well. What sets these guys apart and what about the group around them? Uh, you were part of the leadership group. You had mm. guys like Aaron Major who were also very influential. Uh, so what sets you apart from the rest of the team or is there anything really? Um, well, I, I, th- I believe and, and the question that I, is asked very often is is how, how hard is it to play for the All Blacks and uh, the All Blacks to be honest is, is the easiest team you can play for mm-hmm. and, and w- what I mean easy it's, is the fact that everyone does their job um, you're not worrying about other people's jobs you know all you need to do is, is your own um, but you know what you're talking about leadership you've got some great um, leaders in there but what, what, um, what separates those leaders are the fact that they can communicate um, messages, and they're they're willing to um, to show their faults, mm-hmm. you know. Like myself as a leader, I, I'm, you know, I, I love to get everyone else on board to be able to u- utilize other people's skills, other people's leadership um, styles, because I believe that um, if you can if you can um, utilize um, you know the the team that you do have get them to to deliver the messages that that probably um, is better coming from that person then uh, I'm, I'm the first person to say hey look you're the best person to do this can you can you sort that out so delegation is is, 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 um, um, is something that I like to, I, I like to do um, purely because I know that um, in order to get the best out of people, you have to get the best person in that in that uh, particular moment. So, mm-hmm. um, so uh, you know, acknowledging your weaknesses and your strength, uh, I think it's a, it's very important, and that's what the All Blacks do. So, mm-hmm. uh, in order to to become a better better unit and better team. And personally, did that skill <coughs> change for you, in the sense that when you were a player and moving on to being a coach, as a coach, you can only get the best out of your team. As a player, you've got to contribute and as well as get the best around you. So did that role change at all for you moving on? I think it became more so important, to be honest. It didn't change um, um, from from what you're actually doing. You just became a lot more prepared and um, as, a, as a coach, you're doing a lot more preparation work than, than actual coaching. You know, um, when I started my coaching career, and you know, a lot of the coaches would, um, that I had um, affiliation to, would actually say to me, "Oh, there's a different beast, this one, which is, um, which, which means you 20 percent of it is actually the, the actual coaching on the field, mm-hmm. and 80 percent is all the organisational, um, is the other stuff that you need to develop in your own coaching, and that comes outside of the the field. So, um, you know, I did. He, yeah, I, I knew a little bit about it when I was um, making that transition, mm-hmm. but actually being put in that transition has um, it's been a great learning curve, um, and it's actually made me enjoy rugby even more, so um, now I'm enjoying uh, my role as a coach. And what was the journey like uh, beginning uh, playing rugby in Wellington, uh, Rodney, going through the ranks to the Hurricanes and then to the All Blacks? Uh, how do you feel when you look back, how do you feel you've changed as a player and a person? Uh, that, that journey was um, was an amazing journey, I believe. Um, you know, I, I played rugby um, really, really late. I, I came from um, from a, a, a soccer background. Mm-hmm. Played soccer until I was about 13, turning 14, and I played rugby league for one year. 
and then shifted to rugby union as most kids in New Zealand you know you congregate to where your friends are and mm -hmm. and I've got older brothers so um, seeing them uh, physically beat people up in their tackles and um, it actually stirred that monster that was inside of me and wanted to uh, I liked the physical contact so um, and made me want to um, make that transition and play. you were part of one of probably the most abrasive back rows in the world at the time Jerry yeah. Collins yourself yeah. and uh, Richie McCaw what was it like being part of that unit oh it's amazing I, I really enjoy it and I was probably um, you know you look back and it, it was a pretty special moment being able to um, um, play with uh, you know playing the same team as those two legends and um, I know it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a moment that I, I'll cherish. And you came up against another back row that's kind of underrated but in 07 uh, Rodney I know it's a tough memory for you guys but Olivier Mania, Serge Betson and Emmanuel Arinodiki how good mm. were those guys? Yeah they were always good you know um, you know playing against other um, uh, other countries is always a challenge and it's a challenge that I love to um, to meet you know physically uh, we're not the biggest um, uh, we've always been the, uh, the probably the smallest you know loose trio um, and that's that's in height and in size so um, that was always a challenge that I I, lo I absolutely thrived on mm -hmm. it was the fact that you know people saw you as a smaller player and and wanted to, you know, exert their 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 dominance, their dominance on you, but oh, I loved it. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you did, uh, Rodney. But sandwiched between those two World Cups, 03, yeah. 07, let's talk about 05 first. That was a Lions tour where I absolutely yep. smashed the British Lions uh, mm -hmm. that came through. Would you say that was the best All Black uh, time that you were a part of? Yeah, definitely. It was. Um, it was a very special moment. I mean, um, you know, the British and Irish Lions come over they're very confident and they brought a very big squad um, on the field and then an even bigger squad. Mm -hmm. 50 um, players. Yeah, an even bigger squad um, that came in their touring mm -hmm. squad. So, um, no, it was, a, it was a very special time, the, the, the 05. You know, you don't really get, you, you try to learn the, his, the history behind it and and you're trying to, trying to gauge what it was like, mm -hmm. but actually being in that environment and then, um, and then seeing that thing develop, it was like, wow, what is this? You know, it was a totally different, um, totally different atmosphere, and it was, it's definitely one that I, I would highly recommend um, for, you know, the All Blacks um, that are, that are going to play in that the next tour, you know, to 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 prepare for that and. Uh, and you know it's something very very special and and you'll hold that there but in saying that we you know if people that um that are wanting to go and experience that they should go and watch it uh, it's, it's a pretty special occasion yeah it, did, it looked like a very special occasion indeed and we also saw mm. the birth of uh, somebody who uh, the whole world started talking about after that band carter how mm. good was that guy oh he was good he, he was always Good right before that because he mm -hmm. made you know obviously O three and um, was his first year and uh, he's always a classy player and you knew um, especially as a num number eight and as as a um, as a forward and there is um, there's a lot of comfort that that's mm -hmm. given to you when your fly half is when your fly half is, is is putting the ball in front mm -hmm. of you is making the right decisions you know um, nothing worse than a, than than a back line or a, first, a fly half that's not um, making the right choices as a forward because mm -hmm. you end up saying a lot of bad words yeah, on the way back, back to pick it up. Yeah. So um, yeah, no, it's pretty um, comforting to to have a quality first five and um, that they can steer a team like that. And how was 03 and 07, uh, Rodney? I know it was mm. a huge amount of pressure uh, going into those two World Cups. Uh, Sterling Mortlock stole one away from you, and yeah. then, of course, the French stole the other one away from you. Uh, what was that feeling like in the dressing room after that? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a weird feeling because it's, a, it's, a, it's one that... Um, the amount of work that you've put into that very moment, and it just snaps and... You know everything is gone in 80 minutes, 
you know, but the whole preparation that goes into it, it's, it's, it's months and months and months of work, you know, and you could, or, or even, even before that, it's four years before that. So we've been pre prepping up for four years for that moment. So that was the same thing we prepped up after 03 for that moment, you know, that in 2007. And, and in um, one, of, one of the areas that we, um, we, did, we probably didn't, um, we didn't consider was what if the, um, what if the ref had influence and, yeah. you know, we've, we did everything else and what if we weren't playing that well, what if we dropped too many balls, giving away too many penalties. You know, it's one of those things that we, um, for me, I, I look back in reflection and I think, well, you know what, it's a great learning curve um, uh, for me at that moment as a player, but in more so for me as a coach. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's something that I will take um, away from it and go, what, what worked, what didn't work, what do we need to do to, to, um, to secure a win, you know? Mm -hmm. And in there are certain moments in that, um, in that um, 07 where, where we, we didn't do the right things and, um, you know, or we didn't react, or, or, you know, we didn't react to what the situation was and um, ultimately lost the game. So, so it's a good learning curve um, and, uh, and that's one that I'll definitely um, add into my coaching. And it seems like New Zealand rugby has learned from that as well, apart from your new guys individually, uh, because they seem to have got that monkey off their back now and they're able to win uh, tough games. Do you, do you see this next World Cup being uh, three in a row? Uh, potentially, but, um, but you can't write off the other, two, uh, the other teams as well. You know, the, um, everyone's been talking about it. The Irish is going well. Uh, the Welsh, we just saw last week, uh, beat English. So the, the, and the English is... Um, you know, under the leadership of, of uh, Eddie Jones, is is doing a fantastic job uh, with her, with his team. But then we look at South Africa, who who are always very very strong. Um, so you can't really ride anyone else. And and I, I think it's going to be one of those uh, tournaments now. Is you know it doesn't really matter what you did the four years previous to that. There's that very moment. You know, that's that's who who's going to win it. So bit of a lottery, I'd, I'd say. And will you be in Japan for it, Rodney? Um, I will see the tickets, I think. <laughs> There's no way. Um, it might be a, a very nice place to be um, in, in the World Cup. And uh, what about you? What's next for you? Are you back in Wellington now, the place you grew yep. up in? Back in Wellington. Um, so I'm doing a lot of coaching in there. Yeah. And in the... Um, um, so I'm doing some work of Trinity and we'll be back in um, in April so uh, to to hopefully see if, how, how we go you know keep developing our boys and um, and then potentially do some work in Sri Lanka and see, see what happens awesome great to have you on the show uh, thanks, Rodney man. Soyalo thanks very much uh, to Odell for hosting us here in uh, their sports yeah. uh, arena and uh, Rodney Soyalo, former All Black captain, consultant, Trinity coach, uh, two-time a World Cupper with the All Blacks as well, British Lions uh, winner. Uh, absolute privilege to have him with us on the Papare.com. Rodney, thanks again. Thanks, Cheers, man. Thank you.